I want to talk just for a minute about GFCI protection in bathrooms. And what we're working on here is we have a small little bathroom that's being added and we just are going to be powering this thing with one 20 amp circuit which is totally adequate for the load that it's going to be serving. All we have here is one box right here which is going to be a receptacle for the vanity and then another box right down there just for convenience and then a two gang switch and that's going to be feeding the lights as well as a little bathroom fan. So one 20 amp circuit is adequate however there's significant consideration to be taken regarding GFCI protection. Now what we're going to do in this instance is we're going to use a dual function breaker that's both GFCI and AFCI uh, all in one. And the benefit of that is that it's a little bit cheaper than using uh, point-of-use uh, GFCI receptacles. And it also tends to be a little bit more reliable and trip a little bit less often. Now the issue that many people would bring up regarding this installation is that both the lights and the receptacles are on the exact same circuit. So if you do trip one of these GFCI receptacles, the lights are going to go out. So you're not going to have lights in here if you do manage to trip that GFCI. Now the obvious solution to that is to have your lights be supplied by a different circuit entirely, possibly. So basically we would have a different power wire coming into this box, which powers the light and the fan. Or we could use a combination of an arc fault breaker serving this entire room, and then use GFCI receptacles for each location that we want a receptacle. With the way we have the wire running in this particular installation, we would have to install a GFCI receptacle here, as well as a GFCI receptacle right there, because the power comes into this box, goes over to there, and up into the lights. So in order for those to not have GFCI protection up at the lights and the fan, we would need to basically have a point of use GFCI right there and right there because we wouldn't be able to use the load side of one of those GFCI receptacles. So let me know what your opinion is in the comment section below. Uh, my final take on it is that if you just are doing a standard little bathroom like this and you're not like super concerned about the lights always being on, like just understanding that it might trip, you know, once in the next five years and have kind of a, an unfortunate situation where you have to fumble around in the dark for a minute, then I'd say don't worry about it. But it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade to consider if you want to absolutely do the best installation possible. You could either pull a separate circuit for your lights or do that combination where we're going to be using point of use GFCIs so that a GFCI incident doesn't actually trip the lights out as well. It does meet code to have both GFCI and AFCI protecting your lighting in your bathroom and it doesn't require that they be separated. So that's what we're doing today. We're doing kind of a code minimum installation and it's just uh, something that you have to kind of think about and understand. All right, if you guys want to keep learning with me, I'll put a couple of videos here on the screen for you to choose from. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate you guys a lot and I look forward to talking to you in the comment section. All right, we'll see you guys right over there.